Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. We are so excited, as you've already heard and seen uh, many of our members from uh, the incredible New Era Church and our incredible sister church, Common Ground. I am blessed today to be here with my good friend, Pastor Jeff. And uh, hello, Pastor Jeff. How are you today? It's Pastor so Moore. It's so good to have you here. Thank you for having us. We've been trying to get together and do some things together, yep. and now here we are. Would you just share a little bit uh, with the congregations, our congregations, while we're here? Yeah. Good morning, <laughs> uh, Common Ground and New Era. It's great to be with you this morning, and uh, yeah, thank you for hosting us. Um, it has been a joy uh, for me personally, just to get to know New Era Church, your pastor over the last couple of years. We've spent lots of time over at Lincoln Square when there wasn't a pandemic, uh, yes, enjoying yes. each other's company. And I've really Absolutely. grown and learned so much about leading a church, just pastoring a congregation by getting to know uh, Pastor Moore, and also about um, how it is that uh, we can work together in the, the work of the gospel here in the city. So thank you so much for having me, for hosting me, and for hosting us here this morning. Yeah, well, it's, it's my blessing. You know, I've been doing this for 30 years now in uh, pastoral ministry, and um, I think one of the most challenging uh, issues we have now in the Church of Jesus Christ, and of course culturally, mm -hmm. is uh, how do we get along racially? Yep. And uh, you and I have had many conversations mm -hmm. uh, because we want to really be a, uh, how should I say that, a, a mirror yep. of what Christ wants to see in his church. Yep. And so it has been a joy, uh, common ground, to spend time with your pastor who has a heart for uh, God and a heart for the people of the community. And so it's, it's, he's extraordinary. And, um, and in, in, in many ways, um, I love his heart. And so uh, I, I'm, I'm proud to be able to spend this time together today. Uh, both of our churches worshiping together. We hope you've enjoyed our worship. Our, mm. Both of us, you know, of course, because of COVID, we couldn't really do it like we wanted to. Mm. But uh, hopefully you got a taste of both worship styles and, and worship services. And we look forward to uh, the rest of our time today. So, Pastor Jeff, let me just uh, go to the Word of God. Uh, as you know, our conversations are always based on the Word. Yep. And so I told you about a sermon series I was doing, and uh, it was predicated and founded in uh, Matthew's Gospel, mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 13. And I want to read uh, some of that text, and then I want to get your reflection. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to start at verse 3. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. And he was scattering the weed, scattering the seed rather, and some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly, and because the soil was shallow, but when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Ah, but still other seed fell on good soil, mm -hmm. where it produced a crop 160 and 30 times what was sown. That is the scripture that we have been feeding off of uh, for most of the month of January. And I told my congregation that we can go down two different paths mm -hmm. on this particular text. We can go down what I call the social justice path mm -hmm. or the spiritual justice path. Mm -hmm. path. And so I wanted your thought on this when it says still other seed fell on good soil. And I think that's what we're trying to do is yep. create some good soil in our community. And, and I think for us, the, the way that you approach this text, the way that we've been talking about how you're approaching this text, yes. is the enlightening reason why 
our congregation needs to be in relationship with your congregation. Why wow. I need to be in relationship with you. Yeah. Because we tend to look at these down the spiritual justice path <laughs> only. We only have one path when, right. we at, when we open the scriptures. Wow. And I think there's something really important about the way that you're thinking through this text and its uh, relevance for us today. And I, I would love to hear how you're preaching through this passage right now. <laughs> because here's the thing. Our, we, we do. We have one road that we yes. tend to take, and we, we block out all other roads. The gospel is spiritual. It's not, uh, it's not necessarily about what, what's happening in the world. It's what's happening in our hearts. And yet we know that that's not the gospel that Jesus came to proclaim. I have right. come to preach good news to people who need good news. <laughs> and so I, I really appreciate the way that you're, you're thinking through this. And I have never seen this passage this way. Wow. That, and, you know, it, it, I was actually uh, going down my normal um, spiritual mm-hmm. uh, uh, evangelistic hermeneutic. Yep. Yep. And it dawned on me, there's something wrong with the soil of America. Yep. And because the soil has the qualities that Jesus talked about in this text, rocky, yep. thorny, yep. Um, and, and, and at times um, not con- conducive for growth, right. I thought, you know, the church of Jesus Christ has some rocky soil right now. Yep. And, and so I, I, I thought, well, how do we begin to prepare the soil mm-hmm. so that in this new era, I'm going to say mm-hmm. it, you heard it earlier, I'm sure, <laughs> we can find common ground. Come on. And so when I think about the soil, that's what I want you to just talk to me a little bit because you're mm-hmm. right, white evangelicalism oftentimes sticks strictly with that spiritual justice, mm-hmm. but sometimes... Guys, I'm talking to my common ground hmm. family now. Tell them. There are times that we get uncomfortable when we look at this text through Jesus' eyes who came to and was born to poor people and uh, born to those that were underprivileged. I want Pastor Jeff to kind of pick that up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I think that there are times when we... Uh, use the, the scriptures to illustrate the problems of others, we oftentimes don't allow the scripture to interrogate us. And so I, I think for the way that you, you're thinking through the soil, the, the, knee, the good farmer, the good farmer, the good farmer. He, he throws the seeds and then he goes back the next season and he pulls the weeds. Yes. He removes the rocks. He, because he wants a good crop. And right. I think that the events of our recent past in these last weeks yes. have shown us that the soil is toxic. Yes. And, and particularly when it comes to the church. Yes. Uh, Isn't that amazing? The, the symbols and the signs that were on display at the Capitol building those weeks ago uh, were Christian symbols. They sure were. They had been appropriated for... Yes. Uh, as they have been historically, for yes. um, white supremacist yeah. intentions. That is the result of our discipleship. And so if, if that's what we're producing, then we need to look at that and we need to say, what needs to be changed? What amendments need to happen? And, and that's where I think this passage is so powerful in that the way that you're thinking through it, um, it, it it's a way for us to... Uh, interrogate our own soil. Like, where are the rocky places, the thorny places, the places that we need Jesus to come yes. and change so that good fruit can grow? Amen. And I think we'd be remiss in thinking that the good soil was good on its own. Yep. And what I mean by that is, I believe the farmer had to prepare that soil, yeah. which means he had to go and remove some thistles and thorns and mm-hmm. rocks. And that's what we're trying to do. You and I yep. are trying to bring to the attention of uh, Christendom is that even though we are saved, we are still sinners saved by grace. Yep. And what God requires of us is that we continue to improve the environment in which we are to spread the good news of Jesus Christ, which means that the good soil needs to be 
maintained and manicured mm. in order for it to have the kind of, as the scripture says, hundredfold, sixtyfold, and thirtyfold. It's hard work to bring forth a crop. Yep. And there are times you have to look in the mirror and say, you know, hey, these are some areas I need to really work on. And that's why I love what we're trying to do here at Common Ground and at New Era Church, trying to remove some of the debris that's keeping us. Historically, you said it so right, mm -hmm. Pastor. Historically, the church, unfortunately, has been one of the main propagators of the division yep. that's taking place in America yep. and across the world. And we just have to acknowledge it. I mean, we have, of, of all of the institutions that have language yeah. for what we do when we come up against division and sin, yeah. we repent. That's what we do. Right? That means uh, the world is not going to fix itself. Right. Right? But the church <laughs> has good news. Yeah. But we can't have the good news unless we are willing. Uh, I, think, I think John said it. Um, if we claim to be without sin, the truth of God is not in us. And yeah. so if we confess our sins, yeah. he is faithful and just to forgive us. Exactly. And I think that's just at the bottom line for us as a congregation. We want to acknowledge the... Uh, the, the reality of our situation in our country. And then for us as Christians, uh, we, we may not have caused that problem, but we live in the space where that problem is toxic. Yes. And G we have a beautiful little illustration here, a nice little picture, a story, where Jesus says this is how we can create uh, soil that produces good fruit. Absolutely. And so, and I would just want to say thank you mm. for your patience <laughs> and your kindness in, in walking me slowly through this process because yeah. um, we don't know what we don't know. Absolutely. And, and when, when the light comes on and all of a sudden you're like, oh, wait a second, we're part of the problem. Yeah. But your, your kindness has been a demonstration of the grace, I think, that, um, that leads us to repentance. So thank you. Well, I tell you, I, I feel called uh, in uh, these... Uh, in this season of my ministry, I should say, uh, to be that bridge that we've yep. been talking about. Uh, because I believe that the Church of Jesus Christ could, could, needs to be so much more uh, representative of what it's going to be like when we, when we get to heaven. Yep. Um, and so I can say this. What I love about talking with you, um, see, <laughs> when, one thing I hate it's when I'm riding around and my wife is quiet and I'm going, what's wrong? You know, what's wrong? And she's like, she's not talking to me, right? <laughs> and so, uh, and then when she begins to tell me what is wrong, yep. I go into my little cave. You mm -hmm. know, I go into my little cave and I, because I don't want to hear, right. I don't want to hear where I'm falling short yep. or where, and, and I think, well, you know, I really didn't cause that. So why am I being charged with that? And, yep. and, and I think sometimes in, in this arena, yep. when, when we are trying to get our white brothers to understand that though they didn't cause where we are, if they're not careful, they can be complicit. Mm -hmm. In keeping us to where we are, yep. they could they are they could be holding the system together, and unfortunately, when you talk about what happened at the Capitol, yep. there were pastors there, there were uh, deacons there, yep. there were members there from from churches from across America, and uh, I think that it's a bad testimony yep. uh, to the culture that uh, the church gets so caught up in um, those kinds of toxic yeah. environments. Yeah. And again, it, we have language for this. Yeah. When we, we have repentance and we, have, we confess our sins and we repent and resurrection happens. Like new life comes Absolutely. from those places. Yes. And as horrible as that scene was, um, the, the opportunity for the church right now, right? The opportunity for good news people to share Absolutely. that kind of uh, good news is it, people want to hear, well, people want hope. And we're, our, our series right now, we're building bridges of hope. Yes. And we can't do that unless we're willing to walk across the bridge. 
right? Wow. We can't export what right. we are not experiencing. Yeah. And so part of the, you know, gift of, of the relationship that I've had with you is that it's helping me to understand and uh, experience life through through your eyes, you know, and that and that the relationship for for us is the is the gift of being able to see the world through different eyes. Absolutely. Because if we don't, we just see it through our own eyes, and our echo chamber kind of keeps us stuck. Yeah, it's like my friend who was driving down the road, had a wreck, mm-hmm. took him to the hospital to help mend a broken leg, and they found out he had cancer, mm. but they called it early. Yep. If it had not been for the wreck, if it had not been for the accident, yep. they would not have caught the fact that he had a bigger problem. Yep. And I think the issue that's going on in America with the George Floyd murder yep. uh, and now the situation with the Capitol, I think mm-hmm. those are kind of wrecks, turmoil mm-hmm. that's now making America look in the mirror and it's actually bringing to the surface that which has kind of been under the scab and the womb, mm-hmm. and that is the original sin of America of racism mm-hmm. and slavery and all the uh, ramifications of those kinds yep. of historicities that have taken place yep. in America. Yep. You know, I came across another verse, Pastor, I want to share. Uh, before I started my series on Encounters with Jesus, uh, after the George Floyd uh, incident, I started a a series called Jesus and Justice. Mm -hmm. Jesus and Justice. Let me read a scripture. I want you to comment on it for me. You know, Jesus encountered this rich young man, and he had everything going for him, and he thought he was that in a bag of chips. And uh, and, and so he asked Jesus, you know, what do I have to do to inherit the kingdom of God? Most of you all know that story, right? Common ground, new era. Okay, and Jesus, and and they got to talking about... uh, what those qualifications are. And the young man said, I must love the Lord my God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength, and with all my mind, and love thy neighbor as yourself. Now, that's the dichotomy that I see oftentimes with my white brothers and sisters in the church. Mm -hmm. They love the first part of that commandment but how do we really love thy neighbor as we love ourselves? Yep. I don't think we could, we could fulfill that commandment if we're not treating everybody the same. Yep. What do you think about that? Well, he tells the story then, the next, the, the next verse, right? Okay. He tells the story about the Good Samaritan. Oh, he illustrates right the that. point, right? That's right. He, and he, uh, he lets us know that um, there are... The way that we love uh, our neighbor is in the way that we're willing to uh, sacrifice and, and get down to the, the... I mean, he stopped. He got down. He put himself <laughs> at risk in order to care for somebody that was uh, supposed to be his enemy. Yeah. And I, I think that there's a sacrifice, there's a... a a humility that's involved. There's a willingness to learn and listen yes. that is required for us to see someone truly as a neighbor. Wow. And, and I, I, I just, I think that uh, we have not spent enough time sitting with people who are not like us, yeah. listening to how they experience the world, yeah. and trusting that their experience is true. Yeah. And th- again, said it again, but that, I mean, that's what you've given me. You've given me the opportunity to sit with a brother. We are brothers in Christ. Right. We, we death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah, and, and we preach this out of the same book the every same Sunday. Book, every Sunday. And we experience the world very differently. Yes, we do. And Absolutely. if I'm not willing to, to trust your experience as true, then I'll, I'll just move on. You know, I'll hurry on my way. I hope somebody comes and gets you. But I'm gonna move. I'm gonna make my way to where I'm going because I'm only interested in taking care of myself. And I think uh, the the parable, the story, the who is my neighbor, requires us to um, get to know people. Yeah. Hear their story. You know, back to the story. My wife telling me when I'm not dotting the I's and crossing the T's. <laughs> uh, I, I've I've heard that that happens. I don't have experience. <laughs> 
I know. I, I, you just good. We like need that. we need to edit that part, but <laughs> yeah. yes. Uh, but uh, you know, th th those are times when um, I, I feel. I, I mentioned earlier, I feel defensive. Mm -hmm. But a lot of men we just quit the relationship. Yep. They just say, "Hey, I'll go find another yep. person." And you alluded to that. Yep. In white America, can can always fade back into the culture. Yep. And and because the culture is 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 has privileges mm -hmm. and benefits yep. that automatically come yep. as a result of oftentimes your whiteness. Yep. Uh, I, I tell the story of one time when I was uh, in college at University of North Carolina. I took a biology course, and there were like 200 kids in that in that uh, biology lecture. Mm -hmm. uh, I was the only African American in the class, hmm. and so I would go to class. I noticed periodically, you know, there were seats missing over here and <laughs> seats. And the one day, the one time I missed my lecture. Uh, my professor approached me and said, you weren't here last, uh, at the last week. Uh, you know, you have to be here now in order to get a good grade. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, how did he know? Oh, <laughs> I'm the only one in his class. Yep. My point is, is that when the other students were missing, yep. they, they could fade away and fade back. But when you, we've lived in, in this predominant culture for so long, yep. uh, there are just some built-in barriers. Yep. Which is challenging for us as a predominantly white church. Uh, we, when something happens in the in the culture, George Floyd, everybody's, uh -huh. you know, riled up, and then it kind of settles down again, and right. then we can kind of go back on with our business. And I right. think again, yeah. the relationship with New Era Church for us is not just about that mutual, uh, not just about hearing stories, right. lived experience. It's accountability. Right. Absolutely. So there, there is some built-in accountability in our relationship yeah. as well, which says, "Hey, you, you can't just stop paying attention to this because we, you can't just stop paying attention to it. We have that privilege, yes. but as brothers and sisters, I mean, the scriptures are very clear: carry one another's burdens, wow. and thus fulfill the law of Christ." Absolutely. Right. And so if if we're not carrying with you, yeah. then we're not fulfilling the, the the command that Jesus gave us to love our neighbor. Absolutely. So I think there's some you know, accountability that you provide. And you, you do it so gently, but like, you know, <laughs> you're, you're, very, you're very careful in how you provide that accountability to me, but you're also very, you're very clear and truthful. I mean, yeah. you speak the truth in love, and I, and I, I, think, I really appreciate that. Yeah, I think that's what we have to be now yep. and where we are. I think that the church is, the church is too critical to the, our dark culture mm -hmm. that we are not really uh, very authentically and intentionally kind of making sure that we are dealing with uh, the real issues that are in front of us when it comes to race. And, yep. You know, uh, you heard me say often that I, I'm not interested in racial <laughs> reconciliation until we can start talking about the inequities <clears throat> that exist in uh, our culture and unfortunately in our church. Mm -hmm. You know, you alluded to going further with that text, love thy neighbor as thyself. You told the story about the Good Samaritan. Mm -hmm. And that's another story that Jesus uh, I, think, I think he, on purpose, remember the scripture where he says, I must needs go through Samaria? Mm -hmm. And that was very unusual for a Jew. Yep. That's like saying, you know, I must needs go down in the hood. <laughs> 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 and it's like, and it, I'm sure the, the uh, disciples are going, what? We don't go through Samaria. We right. go around Samaria. Yep. We have no dealings with those people. Yep. And Jesus said, no, I must needs go through yep. Samaria. Yep. And you know that whole incident when, uh, when you met the young lady at the well and she said, well, why are you talking to me? You a Jew. Watch this. And you, have, you all have no dealings with us. Yes. You see how she... Mm -hmm. In other words, we, we don't have a problem with y'all, but y'all got a problem with us. Yes. And so I think Jesus was taking his disciples on a... Uh, how should I say this, on a tour mm -hmm. of racial justice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I mean, we're sitting in a, a, a church building that has a highway going right by Come it, on. right? That's right. So that the folks from up there can get down there without right. having to go through here. That's right. right? They built. They came yep. right around the African American community, yep. and uh, and so I think he was saying because when the Jews, the brothers showed up, mm -hmm. the guys he built the church on, the first, yep. the foundations of the the, the church. They were wondering why was he talking to this woman. Yeah. I think he was sending them a message that, you know what, guys, Samaritan lives matter. Mm -hmm. No more and no less, right. but their lives matter. And what you've been doing, if we're going to build this church that's going to go to the uttermost parts of the world, because yeah. God so loved the world. Yeah then we got to find a way to love each other, regardless of one's ethnicities or one's social strata. And it, it took a while, too. Those disciples who were there in Samaria, who saw Jesus bless, who saw the first evangelist that John records, right? She goes back to town. Absolutely. Tells the whole, tells the whole city, you know? <laughs> I, met, I met the one. Yes. Uh, those same disciples in the book of Acts had to be reminded again that Gentiles are included. Absolutely. Right? Peter had to have a vision. He did, didn't he? And he had to go to Cornelius' house. He sure did. And the thing is, is that the, that whole scene was for Peter more than it was for Cornelius. Because before he got done preaching, the Holy Spirit came. Absolutely. Right? They yes. were already ready. <laughs> that was more for Peter's conversion. It was for us exactly right. right? Hey, right. Peter, I meant what I said. God right. so loves, loves the, the world. world, the whole world, yes, everybody. everybody. And we, when we come to Jesus, we have to lay our cultural distinctives aside. Doesn't mean we don't still identify ourselves Absolutely. as. Absolutely. But yeah. like primarily, we are followers of Jesus. Yes. There's no Jew nor Greek, free nor slave, male nor phenom. I mean, we're all right. one in Christ. All one in Christ. And we somehow were able to... Uh, Ignore that portion of the scriptures when we uh, founded our nation. Yeah. And we just set that part aside. Absolutely. When I read the historicity of, uh, of the Baptist church, mm -hmm. uh, I'm really appalled yeah. that it was uh, basically, uh, if, and I hope you get a chance to read a book uh, that Pastor Jeff and I are reading uh, called uh, it's called White Too Long. We're also reading a book called Begin Again, and just trying to to help us think through uh, how we could because uh, you know if if you don't know your past, you you can't really uh, keep from making the same mistakes in the future. Yep. But he talks about uh, how unfortunately the the Baptist movement in the South uh, basically uh, condoned. Um, the separation of the races, and mm -hmm. uh, actually also condoned, uh, you know, making uh, black people second-class citizens. Yep. Um, which, and, and the other thing I wanted to say, back to Peter and Paul, um, there were times Peter kept slipping when he'd get around his Jewish friends, yep. then he would, he would kind of, you know, he would be along with the boys. Yep. And they had a prejudice bone in them because oh, they yeah. felt privileged. Those they, Jews felt they felt like that God had, was their God, and, yep. and God kept trying to tell them, you "No, know, <laughs> you're my people, yep. but I'm everybody's God, yep. right? And I want to use you to go and tell all the rest of my children who I am." Yep. And the Jews like, "God, man, we're privileged, and, and we got this, and we do well." And uh, so every now and then, Peter would kind of get around his boys. He slide over. And, and Paul <laughs> called him out. Yep. Called, I opposed him to his face. To his face. Yep. You, listen, we are, I love that scripture, we're not male, female, Jew, Greek, we, I mean Gentiles, we are one. Yep. And you can't be hypocritical. You can't be one way at church and a different way at work. Right. We have to find a way to teach our people to Make sure, and it's going to take some removing some of those rocks in the soil, yep. those thistles and thorns yep. that prick us uh, when we're trying to grow a garden yep. for the Lord. We're going to have to be mindful of the fact that this is a growing 
experience. Yep. And if we can't find common ground <laughs> in this new era, yep. our children and grandchildren will have to suffer through some of the agony that my generation. Yep. See, I'm a baby boomer. Mm -hmm. What, what are you? I think I'm just after you. I'm a, I think I'm, uh, what would it be next? Is it Gen generation X? X? Yeah. yeah. I think I'm Generation yeah, X. Yeah. How, do you guys think we see uh, the, the racial landscape differently, or we, we're pretty much the same? In terms of generations? Yes. Very, I think it's different, for sure. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yep. I, I, particularly from, I, I would say, the white community, the, the older we get, I think the, the less we are inclined to be attentive to the racial discord. We're more inclined to, uh, I would say, blame individuals, but not systems. Oh. So I think the, the younger you get, particularly within the white community, the more open we are to, to the suggestion that the soil's bad. That it's not just a bad seed that hit the soil. Right. The soil, the soil that it hit is, is bad. And yeah. I think um, the older you get, um, the less inclined you are to see that. And the less inclined you are to see that you need to help. Right. I mean, there's problems out there, but they're not my problems. Right. 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 And I think, you know, emerging generations are looking at, particularly the church, and, and saying, well, if, if that's how we're going to be, the white evangelicals, that's, if that's how we're going to be, I, I don't want to be a part of that. And we've seen statistically declining uh, engagement with evangelicalism just because I think people see the inconsistency and they they I, I have a I have a friend I meet with every Monday yes new believer came to Christ six months ago and uh he's just reading the Bible yeah he has no history with the church mm -hmm. and he he looks at the teachings of Jesus and then he compares that to what he sees in the church <laughs> and he says how is this possible how is it possible? how can you read these words yes. and do those things yeah and it really, I mean, it really is, it's not that simple, but I mean, it is, um, it's basic. Jesus said, if yeah. you love me, you obey my, you obey my commandments. You know, as Dr. King, when he wrote his letter from the, uh, the letter from the Birmingham, mm -hmm. Birmingham jail, he was writing to white pastors. Yep. And he said to white pastors, he says, I see your steeples. I see your large buildings and your educational edifices. He says, I, 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 I see how God has blessed you. How is it that you can go in Sunday, Wednesday Bible study? How is it that you can go in and not hear the cry mm -hmm. in his day of the Negro? Yep. He says, there's, there's some inconsistency here. How, you know, how do you not see the need of the community? And, and yet, and he was just saying, you know, I, I'm in jail, but not, I'm in jail not because I did something wrong. Right. Like Paul, I'm in jail because I'm trying to spread the love of God. Mm -hmm. And here I am. And, 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 and my brothers who should be my brothers in Christ are silent. Yep. Silent. And what you and I are trying to do is to raise our voices and not be silent. Yep. I'm going to say this. Common ground, Neuro Church has heard me say this before. Uh, what you going to do when you get to heaven and Jesus walks out and he's got an afro? <laughs> <laughs> Go to Revelation uh -huh. with me. You can go book Revelation with me. Read that first, second chapter. I mean, read it on your own. And see them describe the Christ. I'm telling you, my white brothers and sisters, my black brothers and sisters, we have got to get it together down here. Yep. Because ain't going as, as, as grandma was saying, ain't going to be none of this up in heaven. Yep. <laughs> yep. And we're practicing. We're right practicing. Now. We're practicing right now we, for what we're going to exactly. for eternity. We can't wait till we we got to start now. Yep. Oh, what a foretaste. We used to sing a hymn. Come on. Oh, what a foretaste, foretaste of glory divine. divine. And that's church. Yes. And if we're not if we're not tasting it and if we don't want it here, 
Absolutely. We ain't going to want it for there. Yeah. Well, I'm excited that our two churches have decided to, in a very intentional way, uh, to go down this road together. Yeah. Um, you we got some team. great team members we who do are, I mean, probably should have put them up here and let them talk to, <laughs> talk to the people, but we've got some, some folks that are passionate about this that are going to continue to hold our feet to the fire uh, to continue on down the road. So I'm, I'm really excited. Yeah, I think you and I both know the risk that we take mm-hmm. in uh, trying to uh, improve the soil. Yep. Of, um, of our culture and, of course, of our two churches. Uh, the risk is, is that there are going to be some farmhands mm. that don't want to put in the work. Yep. Um, and I, I just want to say that um, I think that I can speak for New Era Church. Uh, we are willing to do the work because I believe that uh, our two churches can be a replica. As a matter of fact, we think we can be leading um, uh, this movement um, to try our best to replicate um, and make sure that when we're throwing the seed, mm. that we prepare the ground for the growth that God is looking for. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm glad to be at the table with, with Pastor Jeff and uh, the Common Ground family, and uh, we are looking forward to uh, this continued dialogue, but not just dialogue, mm. actually uh, putting some, uh, as, as, we, as we say here, boots on the ground. Boots on the ground. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Thank you as yeah. well. Thank and you, Pastor. What else are we going to do, right? Yeah. I mean, absolutely. We're I just think passing through. Let's do some good. Yes. Would you close us in prayer? I would love to. Thank, Thank you. you again for hosting. Thank you so yeah. much for being here. Would you all pray with me, please, as we close this morning? God, we thank you for uh, the grace that you have given us in the person of Jesus. We thank you that you came to be with us, that you took on the flesh that we wear and you experienced the pain that we experience and that you overcame the world. And so our hope, Father, is in the reconciliation of all things, that you are going to restore and redeem creation. And we thank you, God, that you have done that for us as we have said yes to Jesus. Yes. And we thank you that you have also uh, empowered us with the ministry of reconciliation, that uh, as your church continues to do this work, we proclaim something that's true to the world, your good news. And so I just pray for New Era Church as they continue to embody the good news wherever they go, where they uh, work and where they play and where they live. And I thank you for Common Ground Church and the good news that they yes, embody where they yes, go. And I yes. pray, God, that you would continue to give us vision for how we can do these sorts of things together. And I pray that you give us the courage to step into the vision that you give us. Uh, Holy Spirit, we thank you for uh, taking us by the hand and leading us into all truth. And yes. we just pray... Uh, This morning, as we have gathered together, that this would be a a first step in in many, many things to come. Uh, Jesus, we pray these things together in your name. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. So thank you again uh, for tuning in to our joint virtual service. And uh, just keep in mind that as we are trying to come out of this pandemic mm. of COVID-19, we are also, Pastor, wanting to take the vaccine for the sins of this world. Mm-hmm. And Jesus Christ is that vaccine. Mm. And he can cure whatever element that you may be facing today. And so I want to offer Christ to you. I ask that you would receive him right now in your heart, Mm -hmm. regardless of where you've been or what you've done. I pray that right now, Pastor Jeff and I gave our lives to Christ, and we are so much better human beings. Mm -hmm becoming followers of Jesus. We offer that invitation to you. It's real simple. Is that 
Christ died on the cross for your sins. He rose from the dead. He's sitting now with the Father, interceding for you and for us. And if you believe that in your heart, you can be part of that beloved community of faith. Mm. We welcome you right now.